in this video series we have quick introduction to a number of very useful and interesting python libraries today we are going to look at pandas ai this library brings llm and generative ai capabilities to pandas data frames okay so you can install it using the simple pip and then from pandas ai we are importing smart data frame and smart data lake so this function it converts a pandas data frame to a smart data frame uh, using which we can uh, chat and similarly smart data lake it can take multiple data frames as an input okay now we can access the llms from open ai google uh, hugging face uh, and uh, number of others if you want to access open ai llms uh, this is how we do so uh, we obviously need uh, the api key and we set our llm model uh, from open ai okay if you want to access uh, the llms from google vertex ai uh, this is how you need so instead of api key uh, on your gcp a account you will create a project so you will need a project id and the location then you can choose uh, uh, the models offered by google so this text based on uh, this is uh, the cheapest model from uh, google and we can also access the uh, models like star coder and falcon from hugging face uh, all you need is uh, the hugging face api key okay so in this video we are using open ai models and i just removed my uh, after running the code i removed my api key all right so here we have a sample data frame uh, very simple uh, just uh, three columns the country name gdp and happiness index and then we convert this pandas data frame to what is known as this smart data frame using the smart data frame function okay by providing uh, the llm model so this llm model is coming from open ai okay all right uh, we can also set uh, some other parameters for example here uh, we are doing exactly the same thing uh, but this time uh, we are setting a name for the smart data frame and we are also giving it a description now these might be handy uh, when we work with multiple data frames or we want to provide some context uh, to the llm model what this data frame is uh, all about okay and once we have the smart data frame uh, it's very simple uh, we can use this chat function uh, to answer uh, to question uh, anything related to the data frame and we can even do the plotting so here we are saying a smart data frame dot chart uh, which are the five happiest countries okay we haven't used the word top but uh, that's what we imply right so which are the top five happiest countries so if we go back to our data frame uh, so here we have uh, okay let me do one thing yeah so this is our full data frame we are asking for the top five happiest countries so if you look at the happiness index uh, the canada comes first 7.23 and then australia okay so let's see what it answered so it, it answered canada australia and so on so and so forth right all right uh, let's ask one more question uh, so what is the sum of gdps of two unhappiest countries so this time uh, it first needs to look at the happiness index to find out the two countries which have the lowest happiness index and for those two countries it look at the gdp and do the sum of the gdps okay it's bit more involved than this one okay because here we are making use of these three columns information right so from the happiness index we are first finding the country and then using the countries we are finding the gdp and then uh, we are summing the uh, gdps all right so if you look at here uh, the japan and canada have the lowest happiness index and if we sum their gdps it would be 18.9 right so this is the correct answer and then uh, we are asking calculate the sum of the gdp of north american countries now note that in this data frame we have not defined what is north american country right for example here we don't have a column to indicate if a country is north american or not but because we are using llms which already knew uh, which are north american countries so 
the model is able to identify that United States and Canada are the two North American countries uh, from these list of countries and it will take the GDP of these two countries and sum them up, right? So this should be 19.2 plus 1.6, this should be 20.8, uh, which is correct. Now, uh, be careful, uh, Gen AI is still being developed in these LLM models. They are not so good yet uh, with complex questions. So we may not always get the right answers, okay? And then we can even uh, create plots by simply uh, 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 saying, hey, plot the histogram of the countries showing uh, for each GDP, right? So we want uh, the country name on the x-axis and the GDP on the y-axis and it should be a histogram type plot. And then here we are saying using different colors for each bar, okay? So it has even created uh, uh, a plot. Now, since we mentioned, we haven't mentioned uh, the output path, uh, it creates a folder called this exports charts and where it save the uh, 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 plot, okay? Now, if you want to save at a particular location, we can obviously define a path. So here we are using this OS get, uh, get CWD to get the current uh, uh, folder, but it can be any path. So when we are defining the smart data frame, we can provide these two variables, uh, save charts is equal to true and save chart uh, path, right? We can define any path. So this time the, path, the plot gets saved uh, at this user defined path, okay? All right. Now let's work with multiple uh, data frames. So here we have two data frames, uh, employee data and salaries. So employees data frame, it has three columns, uh, ID, name and department, and then the salaries uh, column has two columns, employee ID and salary. Now let's ask a question which require the join of these two data frames, okay? So first we need to create a smart data lakes. So earlier, because we were working with one data frame, we have created a smart data frame, but this time it's a smart data lake. So here are our two data frames, employees data and salaries data. And then uh, obviously we are defining an LLM. Now using this data lake, uh, here we are asking who gets paid the most, right? So first it needs to find out who the employee ID from this table, who gets paid most. So the employee ID is four. Now from this table, a four employee ID, it is getting uh, the employee name Olivia, okay? Please note that here we haven't defined the schema, right? It is inferring the salaries, etc., everything from the given column names. So these column names should be uh, reasonable so that the LLM can understand uh, which columns are relevant uh, to the question we are asking, okay? All right, so Olivia, uh, that's great. Uh, that's also right answer. And then uh, we know LLMs, uh, we get charged based on the input tokens and the output are generated tokens. So we want to find out how many tokens have we used uh, uh, and how much cost we incurred, right? So we have this uh, get callback function and when we are calling the function, we simply wrap uh, 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 within this uh, callback and uh, we can print this information so that it says the total number of tokens used is 632. Uh, this is divided into prompt tokens, which are input tokens, uh, which is uh, our question plus the data frame, and then the completion tokens, which is the answer. Uh, here it said uh, 253, right? So the total cost incurred from this OpenAI uh, LLM models uh, is uh, almost negligible, right? So this library, it has a number of additional uh, functionality for cleaning data, uh, impute missing values, generating features, uh, which I haven't tested yet, but uh, it also has uh, dozens of uh, 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 features for uh, different kinds of plotting, etc. So it's definitely an interesting library. It's being actively developed. Uh, check it out. Uh, it's very useful. That's all for this video. Thank you very much.